Hello, everybody. Uh, I have Amina Mohamed, uh, Deputy Secretary General with us. Uh, she is visiting Washington to join us in the meetings, uh, the, our annual meetings here. And uh, I'm pleased to have her here and we will have a short discussion about some key challenges we are jointly facing. Last week, we launched an important report on uh, the poverty situation in the world. It's a very sobering uh, uh, picture, namely that poverty reduction, extreme poverty is actually flattening out and we are not making enough progress. We are uh, probably from both organizations enormously concerned. How do you think we should go forward? Thank you very much, Axel, for having me. And as always, it's a pleasure to be at these meetings. Uh, we, we get that engagement that we need to carry usually what the High Level Week has done in New York. And this time, there was the pact. Uh, answering that question requires us to look at the first part of the pact, finish the SDGs. It is a framing in which we know we can deal with prosperity, we can deal with poverty, we can also deal with the climate agenda. And I think it's important that we understand how we need to dig deeper for that. And to dig deeper for that requires a lot more resources and focus, targeted interventions um, that allow governments to, to move further at scale, uh, but also to, to bring a more enabling environment for the finance. We know that we're struggling with debt in many countries. We know that we're struggling with access to markets where countries want to make those investments um, and they're not happening. And we have the challenge of commitments that haven't been met for, for climate. So I think if we can be much more intentional in targeting the countries that need to come to the table to meet those commitments would be very helpful. But stick to the SDGs. We have not finished them yet. Um, five years to go. And, and we have this year that is an important year for climate um, and its finance. And we need to deliver on those commitments, deliver on the, the, the very minimum amount that's going to be required to go from billions to trillions. Well, certainly with Ida, we are uh, sharply focused on the SDGs, I should say. There is, of course, another SDG that uh, is uh, extremely important for our overall success, and is the gender agenda. We, we just passed a new gender strategy. Can you also maybe share a little bit where the UN is pushing on the gender agenda? Well, the gender agenda from us, like yourselves, we took an internal reflection of where we are on gender. So we have a gender strategy that will improve the response and support that we give countries across um, our footprint, over 130 countries uh, and still counting. Um, but I think what's more important is how do we get countries themselves to recognize that 50% of their population are women and that's where the investments need to happen um, and girls. Uh, and, and how can we make sure that the data and the stats for us to be more intentional and targeted are better and better, be, better disaggregated? We have um, Beijing Plus 30 coming up next year. It's a good moment for us to reflect on where we are. If we're seeing the pushback, yes, there may be pushback. Afghanistan is certainly a big pushback. We're seeing the atrocities that are committed in, in a lot of the um, conflict zones um, and the burden of, of the humanitarian crisis on the shoulders of women and children. But I think, again, we need to take a step back and say, what more do we do to protect women, the protection of civilians, but particularly women in these uh, horrific zones? The bank and uh, the UN work really well in these um, humanitarian crises um, zones. And I think we could do better in perhaps looking at the cross-border initiatives that we have um, uh, to do better for women. Better for women when we are seeing many coming uh, back um, from atrocities that are actually giving us a huge burden on how to respond on mental health. And I would say that that's a big place that we need to be as well. But look, the care economy, all the things that we know we should be doing for women's rights, um, gender-based violence, these are all areas we need to double down on. Yeah, and probably we need to be very clear in our advocacy because we have to get the message out. I think the UN does a fair share. We try to do itself, but we jointly have to do more. Now, there was also a very other important point in the Pact of the Future, and it is the calls a little bit of the international multilateral system, the reflection on this, the change in the uh, changes in the UN or in, in the MDBs that are going to be necessary to be, be fit for purpose for this century. These are, of course, delicate questions. But uh, how do you see that going forward? Well, I mean, they are delicate questions, but what we have to say is what is the implication of not changing a Absolutely. financial architecture that was designed so long ago to reflect the realities of today? I think one of the good things we got out of the Pact for the Future 
was to address debt and to address that together with the bank and the IMF. Um, the second good thing that we got out of this uh, was us to focus on what will it take to make better the existing institutions we have. The bank is already taking up its own reforms from, for better and bigger and, and bolder. But I think, you know, here, how we can work better together at the country level, um, how we can really see uh, for us the um, increase in, in the, the capital of the banks, uh, all MDBs, and the signal to that's going to be IDA. If we can't dig deep for IDA and, and respond to the most vulnerable and poorest countries, the signals won't be good for the rest. And, and we know um, that we've got huge inequality issues and a slide on the goals in, in middle-income countries and, and, and others. So I think that the, the, the pact really did uh, focus on changes that need to be made to be more responsive and flexible today. Debt, capital increases, access, long-term and, and, and uh, concessional funding, um, but much more, what can we do with what we have? Well, thank you for all these uh, reflections. Uh, I think that the partnership with the UN has really evolved into high gear in the last couple of years. We have had great uh, cooperation, but uh, also great leadership by uh, Amina, our, our close friend. I mean, what is important is that one is uh, honest and outspoken about the issues that we are facing. You have been speaking out clearly. I think also the Secretary General has been, for example, very supportive of Ida. It's hugely appreciated because only together we'll have a fighting chance to, to make a difference. And even there, it will be a challenge. But I think that uh, what I have found encouraging is that there has been a, a great alignment on the big strategic issues of the day and particularly on the development agenda and, and I think that is extremely important at least we know in which direction to, uh, we want to work together and can we do things better absolutely but that is always an agenda that uh, will stick with us so thanks so much thank Have you very much great meetings here and uh, also enjoy the development uh, committee meeting uh, when we uh, meet uh, later this week